you know, something I love, you know, something I really, really love. I love, I love when uh, victims of abuse and trauma, <clears throat> like, express basically any disdain for the situation that they went through or disdain for the person who caused that trauma, who caused that abuse, right? Specifically when it's a fucking person, <clears throat> right? Specifically when it's another person that caused the trauma, caused the abuse. And they show any level of disdain for that person. And for some reason, instead of jumping on the fucking person that caused that shit, um, I love when people run to, uh, to rip the victim apart <clears throat> and be like, you know, you're so, you're, you're so bitter and you're holding a grudge. You've got to let it go. You've got to just forget it. I wish I fucking could. Are you kidding me? So, especially those of us who are left disordered from it. Those of us that are left disordered from it, they're like you're you're holding a you're holding a grudge and you're so bitter. And I'm like that. It happened in the past. That was in the past. I know that, motherfucker. I know that. Y'all sound like motherfucking Forrest Gump when Lieutenant Dan came and was like, "I want to try my sea legs." And Forrest Gump was like, "We well, ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan." And he's like, "Yes, I know that. That's what y'all fucking sound like." Yes. I fucking know that, okay? But my body does not. My body does not. And the little lizard part of my brain that, <clears throat> that, <laughs> that, that is just like, just, just fucking primal, that neither you or I have any fucking control over, uh, it doesn't know that. It doesn't know that. It's stuck in the past. It's, it's frozen in time. Mm -hmm. So even if I were to make a conscious effort to be like, eh, it's in the past, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. <clears throat> okay, now listen, because nuance, because all, because you motherfuckers are out here like the whataboutisms. Well, what about people that this, what uh, I miss it. Listen, fine, fucking nuance. There are some people that are traumatized that have been abused and they're absolutely fucking terrible fucking people. And they will usually use, sometimes use that as an excuse to inflict pain on others or just, especially, especially those that have the fucking resources. I'm aware that not everyone has the fucking resources to get treatment. So to the best of one's fucking ability, you fucking whataboutists, to the best of one's fucking ability, a lot of people just don't do that. And uh, and then they will go on uh, to become a villain in someone else's story. An, an actual villain, mind you. Not the cutesy shit I'm like, I'm okay being a villain in someone else's story. No, like actually chemically altering somebody else's fucking brain. <clears throat> My abuser had PTSD, I don't give a sh I don't give a shit. I have no empathy for that person, if she's even a fucking person. She's not a fucking person, actually. She's not a fucking person. She's a monster. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it happened in the past, you gotta forgive. You gotta forgive. First of all, you don't have to forgive. Um, and I just wonder why, I, I, I wonder why there's this, this, uh, uh, this instinct from so many people to jump on the person that did this shit, perhaps, and perhaps it has something to do with the fact that we regularly fail abused people. Maybe it has to do with the fact that a lot of us, that a lot of people are just bystanders to shit. And <clears throat> maybe it's the fact, maybe it's because a lot of us came up in environments where abuse happens all the time. And it's easier to normalize the fact that it happens instead of going after the people that do it because you're too chicken shit to do it. Church, workplaces, military, you're too chicken shit to actually do anything about it. And so because you're too chicken shit, because <clears throat> as a group, like just in general, a lot of people are just too chicken shit to do what you need to, to do what you probably should do when you see something like that happening, it's easier to put the onus on the person being abused, right? 
Oh, you gotta, you gotta forgive. You gotta let that go. You gotta let that go. Let that go so I don't have to hear about it. Let that go so I don't have to hear. And I don't have to be uncomfortable about the shit that happened to you. Possibly because, possibly because I'm probably part of a group that watches this kind of shit happen all the time. And I don't do anything about it because it's easier that way. Um, but I'm not going to say that out loud. So instead, <clears throat> through the guise of wanting what's best for you, I'm going to tell you effectively to shut up. Don't talk about it. <clears throat> Don't talk about it. It doesn't matter anymore. It's in the past. Shut the fuck up, Rafiki. This is not the Lion King. And no Mufasa is coming out from the clouds to tell me that I'm the one true king. Because there is no reward very often for this shit. Okay? It's on... Listen. Listen. And I'm saying that because I'm like... <clears throat> Yeah, even if even if one were to, even those of us that do the fucking work, even those of us who do the fucking work, go to therapy once a week, once every two weeks, twice a week sometimes for me, you're taking the medication, you're journaling, and you're going to yoga, and you're working out, and you're doing all the things that you're supposed to do, and you're feeling great, you like, you know what, I got my fucking shit together, I got my shit together, I'm unstoppable, finally, again. And then, <clears throat> but here's the thing, the lizard brain, your body, it doesn't fucking forget. It never fucking forgets. And so when similar things, when even the slightest inconveniences sometimes show up in your life, and they're like, <clears throat> they're like 20 times less serious than whatever the fuck you went through. But it doesn't matter. If your body or your lizard brain can latch onto one little fucking similarity that is just significant enough, it will act as if you're there again and you won't even notice it. You won't even notice it. It'll start and then things will just start playing out chemically in your brain the same way that it did back then <clears throat> when your life was actually in danger and you have no idea this is happening <clears throat> you have no idea this is happening you have no idea that you're going through a prolonged ptsd post-traumatic stress disorder episode people throw ptsd around like i got ptsd from this the d is for disorder do you have a disorder no you are, you don't know that you're going through a prolonged ptsd episode all the while you think you are doing fucking great you think that you are light, love and light, live, laugh, love, eat, pray, fucking whatever. You're doing fucking great. But it's just little by little. It's just deteriorating. Just little by fucking little. That lizard brain is taking over. I'm like, oh, we're not going to let this fucking happen again. And it starts putting those in, in just the, in the harmful fucking voices that you thought that you were fucking rid of. They start creeping in again. They start creeping in again because your lizard brain thinks that, it, that it's hearing it, right? Your lizard brain thinks that it's hearing the voice of your abuser because it thinks that you're in the same situation again. It finds the voice. It finds her voice in the most random of places, in the most random of situations. <clears throat> and you have no idea. You think you're saying it. You think that these are your words that you're saying to yourself. Even as they get progressively and progressively more mean, more in, like not compassionate, more like just self-abusive, you think that it's you. You think that these ideas are yours. No, your lizard brain in your body somehow finds the voice of your abuser and hears it and 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 acts as if they are speaking. And then you reach a fucking point where you boil the fuck over and you thought you were doing great. You thought you were doing fucking great. And then all of a sudden you're wigging the fuck out, flipping the fuck out. And it's at this point you realize after weeks, maybe months, that you've been going through a prolonged PTSD episode. And it's not just that either. It's not just the mental breakdown of it all. It's the physical fucking ramifications. Fucking 
when I was <clears throat> when I was diagnosed in 2017, after surviving the year of 2016, which apparently, for all intents and purposes, I should not have made it out of that. I got diagnosed in 2017. They were like, it's official. We knight you post-traumatic stress disordered. <clears throat> that year, I developed this chronic issue in my neck, in my neck muscle. It's called torticollis. And usually it happens in babies, but it happens in adults and can be on like late onset in adults from stress, stress. So this shit pops up all of a sudden, all of this trauma, anxiety, the tightness that your body is in because you're trying to survive a, a terrible fucking situation. It kind of piles up. It doesn't just let go again. I wish I could forget. It's in the past. It's in the past. I wish I could. I wish. I wish my body were on the same page because it wasn't. All of that fucking muscle tension. It finally, the chickens came home to roost and I have chronic muscle tension now in my neck so bad that the first time I got it, I could not even pick up a pencil with the other hand without feeling the worst pain of my life and I had to go to the emergency room. I've had to go to the emergency room probably twice for this. I have been bed bedridden for this. I have it right now. I've had it for two or three days. I've had it for two or three days because of those emotions coming back in a somewhat like not even somewhat fucking similar it's not even it's not even 20 times it's not even close it's not even half it's not even a quarter a tenth of the seriousness that i fucking went through as a matter of fact i'm not even in actual danger like i'm not even in actual fucking danger and i know that my body doesn't the lizard brain fucking does it and so i wake up with this fucking shit motherfucking torticollis and i can barely raise my fucking arm i'm switching between <laughs> like i i i, I can't <clears throat> it's not the worst that it's been because obviously i'm walking around and i'm filming a video of mad and ranting and shit and obviously not the bet is not the worst it's ever been but i absolutely cannot go to yoga i cannot I can't even walk my dog because if he pulls too hard on that dominant uh, hand, that shoulder, home is going to the hospital. And I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital. So I have to sit here. <laughs> I have no choice because of the thing. Because of the thing that people are like, it's in the past. It's in the past. You've got to let go. You've got to forgive. Even if I wanted to forgive, my body won't. My body won't forgive. Because there are people that have hurt me very badly that I have completely forgiven. And my body is like, that's cute, but we still remember. <laughs> <laughs> we still remember that's why you're disordered like oh, I, yeah it hurts to even hold the fucking phone lighting is pretty um, <laughs> and, and it's the moment the, the fucking moment that you realize that you've been going through this for a while now and you thought that you were good. You thought you were good. You thought you were good. But your body remembers. Your body remembers. And these people, and yet these people will jump on your fucking ass. Rather than the person who committed actual crimes against humanity, <laughs> against you and your life and your body, and be like, you've got problems. You've got problems. Again, nuance, because some people, yeah. 
And they got the nerve to say, you got it, you gotta let it go. You can't let it ruin your day. I would love for it to not ruin my fucking day. <laughs> I would love for it. <clears throat> Even the little, little onesie twosie situational ones. Just like, just the onesie twosie situational ones. I would love it. If a mild inconvenience didn't send me into a spiral. I would love it if my automatic reaction, <clears throat> my body's automatic reaction is to act like we're dying. We're fucking dying. I can't, you have no idea how much I wish I could stop that from happening. You have no idea how much I wish that I could just not get a panic attack every time I take an Uber through the Lincoln Tunnel. Like almost every red carpet you see me on, I've had a panic attack like 10 minutes before because for some reason, <laughs> confined spaces, whatever. I can't do anything about that. I wish I could. I would. I would if I could. I would if I could. Nuance, some people, mm -hmm. some people wouldn't because some people love the attention they get when they're miserable. And so that's why they'll never be happy. Anyway, <clears throat> I would love to do something about that. Trust me. I want, I would like to forget about it more than you want us to stop talking about it. Trust me. I'm mad and I'm probably gonna have and, and the thing is like I'm probably gonna have to go through this cycle uh, for the rest of my life over and over again and just tr and just try to catch it and just try to catch it earlier and earlier each progressive time so maybe after a week of, 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 of terrible thoughts or their shit creeping into my brain, maybe after a week, next time, instead of a few weeks or a few months, I can stop it or do something about it. You know what I would give to not have to do that ever again for the rest of my life? That's in the past. That's in the past. You ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. I know that, Forrest.